You may remember in a past video, we actually talked in detail about how to make an IoT version of that classic Blink sketch. Now in this shorter video, we're gonna take a look at how to use what we learned from before to make an input device that can trigger an action in our app that we'll be making in AppShed. Now input such as data coming back into the microcontroller as opposed to the microcontroller sending out commands. For example, if we connect a button up to a microcontroller's digital pin and push the button, we'll be changing the state of the pin from off to on or from zero to one. We can use this state change to trigger actions like to turn on our LED or show an image in our app. In fact, this is the same way your keyboard is able to know when and what you're typing. So understanding this is a must if you're interested in microcontrollers. The first thing we're going to want to do is put the button onto a breadboard, which will help us work with it. Then we connect one leg of the button to pin one and the other leg gets connected to five volts on your microcontroller, which may also be called VCC. So look out for that. Now, leaving it like this is fine. However, due to static and a bunch of other factors, the button may misfire sometimes, which is not ideal. So to fix this, we're gonna add a 10 ohm resistor from ground to pin one on your microcontroller, which should fix the issue. Next, we can upload the AppShed master sketch, which can be found on the AppShed GitHub page. If you're unsure of how to upload the code, check out the IoT Blink video for full instructions. A link can be found in the video description as always. Once the code is uploaded, we can set aside our IoT device for a bit while we work on the app. The first thing to do is to log into our AppShed account and click on IoT Builder. Now, last time we defined one of our pins as an output to be used with an LED. This means it's outputting power. However, this time we're gonna define pin one as an input so we can see when the button is open or closed. So to do this, we click on button under digital inputs and click on pin one and name it and the variable button. Now we can just click save. Now from here, you could add more inputs or outputs such as LEDs, motors, or servos. However, for the purpose of this video, we're just gonna leave it at this one. Now we can head over to the app building side of things to make the app that receives the data from the IoT board. We click on the little plus icon to start a new app and once it's loaded, the absolute first thing we need to do is link the board we just made in the IoT builder. We do this by clicking on boards and then clicking on the board we just made. Now we're gonna add this input box that would normally allow us to input text into our app. However, we're gonna put the variable name button in which tells the box to display the data from the IoT device. It knows to do this because we named pin one button and we've told it to pull data from button. So if you named your button something else, make sure to use that same name. And that's really all we need to do. The super basic app is built. To get it onto our phones, we just need to click publish and wait for that to complete. Then we can head over to share and scan the QR code with our phone to load it as a web app. Now we need to connect to our IoT device's AP, which can be found in your phone's Wi-Fi settings. Once it's all connected up, you could head back to your browser and push the button on your IoT device to see the change. When the button isn't being pushed, you should see a zero, and when it is being pushed, you should see a one. Now yeah, I do agree that only seeing a zero or a one is a little bit boring, but using some of the other features in AppShed, we can actually do some pretty cool stuff. For example, we can change the action of the button to play a sound, and bam, you've got an easy, customizable prank machine. Anyway, there'll be a full written tutorial in the video description along with the previous video if you want to check that out. Thanks so much for watching and we hope to see you in the next tutorial.